Welcome back to Film Master Reviews. I'm Adam J, bringing you my review of the DCU reset button, The Flash, starring Ezra Miller, Michael Keaton, and Sasha Calais. For future content on this channel, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. When I first saw Ezra Miller's The Flash in Joss Whedon's bastardized cut of Justice League, I wasn't a fan of him as the character. I mean, when you have a CW show that is taking the character seriously and then give me a movie where he's the butt of every bad joke, it's a bit disheartening. And I have to say, it broke my heart at the time because I have always liked Ezra Miller as an actor. One of my favorite movies of all time, second only to James Cameron's Aliens, mind you, is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And his performance in that movie is absolutely phenomenal. So I had nothing against Ezra Miller as an actor. I just didn't care for his version of The Flash at the time. That was until all was set right with the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, where instead of The Flash being a one-note joke, he's taken a lot more seriously, gets a lot more to do in terms of the plot, and is even the one who saves the day in the end by reversing time and saving the league. He went from being one of the least favorite DCU characters to being in my top five DCU characters. It was so nice to see Ezra and his character get a bit of redemption with that movie. And yes, let's address it before we move on. Ezra has gotten himself into a lot of trouble in his personal life. I'm not going to go into details because honestly, Honestly, I'm here to review the movie and his performance in the movie. His personal life choices have no bearing on my opinion. This is a review channel, not TMZ. Now that leads us to the topic of today's video, The Flash. After years in development hell, going through god knows how many directors and writers, sorry, I lost count after the first few dozen, the movie has finally seen the light of day at the hands of director Andy Muschietti, a director I have also liked quite a bit. While his film Mama left a lot to be desired, I absolutely loved what he did with It and It Chapter 2. As a longtime fan of the book, I found his adaptation superbly satisfying, and I was looking forward to seeing what he could bring to the table with a Flash film. And after hearing that Michael Keaton would be returning as Batman in the film, I couldn't have been more excited. Keaton will always be my favorite Batman, so seeing him in any capacity is a recipe for greatness in my book. In The Flash, Barry uses the Speed Force to travel back in time and save his mother. This creates a new reality where his father never went to prison, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Cyborg no longer exist, Superman is nowhere to be found, Michael Keaton is Batman, and Supergirl has been kept prisoner in a secret Russian bunker for decades. Now joined by an alternate version of himself, Barry Allen must team with Batman and Supergirl to take down the incoming invasion led by General Zod and find a way back to his reality. So all that said, all that out of the way, did I like this movie? Well, here's a better question actually. How is this movie compared to, say, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? Um, comparing Spider-Verse to this film is kind of like comparing Filet Mignon and Lima Beans. Yes, the Lima Beans will possibly nourish you and serve their purpose, but they're gonna taste like shit the whole fucking way down. That is honestly the best analogy I can make regarding The Flash. It does its job in the sense of repurposing the DCU. Oh, I'm sorry. DCU for James Gunn's needs, or at least I think it does, jury's still out on the ending of this movie being relevant, but dear god, that was a lot of shit to go through for a simple repurposing. So to answer your question, sorry guys, I wasn't a fan of this one. That isn't to say it doesn't have its moments, it does, but as an overall experience, this one was seriously lacking for me and feels more like a hollow shell of what it could have been. So let's get my positives out of the way first. Michael Keaton has been and always will be my favorite Batman, and when he put the cape and cowl back on in this film, it was like he never took it off. My childhood Batman was back in full force and kicking all forms of ass. Keaton did not skip a damn beat as this character, and it was just so good to see him back in action. Keaton's performance as Bruce Wayne is also quite good. Next, Sasha Kelly as Supergirl. Not only is Kelly absolutely stunning in that Supergirl outfit, I'd argue she kicks more ass than The Flash and Batman combined. Her performance as this lost Kryptonian who's been kept in captivity underground for years is just wonderful. She gives this character 110%. With that said, I have to address James Gunn for a moment. Gunn, listen buddy, we've had our good times. I love that remake of Dawn of the Dead you wrote. I love the first two Guardians of the Galaxy films, but we've also had our bad times, bro. The Suicide Squad was a big pile of shit. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was mediocre at best. I said what I fucking said, bring the hate mail. You wrote a new Superman script that ultimately prevented my favorite Superman from returning to the role. What the fuck? But hey, I will let all that slide. All of it. I'll let all of it slide. Under what condition? Just let Sasha Kelly be Supergirl in your universe. Dude, she's the best thing in this movie. And I'm sorry, not bringing her back in some capacity would be an absolute mistake on your part. I really hope she's Supergirl going forward because she killed it. Also, this is more of a thing I'm mixed on than an actual positive. But the film features a slew of cameos from DC film history. Most of them are uncanny valley as hell while some do work. It was about 
50-50 for me in terms of working. Also, I'll say this. The cameo at the very end of the movie got me excited until I realized that James Gunn wasn't going to do anything with it, which turned my smile into an instant fucking frown. I don't understand the point of doing an ending like that and not committing to it. Sadly, I got nothing else for positives, so let's do this. First and foremost, the CGI in this film is fucking horrendous. Like, PS3 graphics, it is so fucking bad. It almost makes Black Panther CGI passable by comparison, which is not good. The pacing in this film is awful. The first 45 minutes outside of Affleck and Gadot's cameos really sucked. It was boring, poorly executed, and added nothing to this bad movie except for more bad. Oh, and just for the record, you're really not doing a good job of distracting us from Ezra's real-world habits when you have him as the Flash putting a baby in a microwave! I don't care if it was a CGI baby, he put a fucking baby in a microwave! And closed the door! I'm sorry, I have a baby at home, so that to me wasn't funny, it was just distasteful. That's my daughter, by the way. Look at that little cutie. Look how bringing adorable she is. Oh my god. Oh, pick those little cheeks. But anyway, the movie only gets worse when we meet Barry from this alternate universe. Not only is the CGI to have them occupy the same space pretty damn bad at times, this version of Barry is just insufferable. He almost makes me miss Whedon's writing for the character. That is how ungodly irritating he is. And he is like this the whole movie. It wasn't until Michael Keaton's Batman stepped in that I started to have any fun. Admittedly, his intro scene was beyond stupid, but once the short kitchen scene is over with, Keaton just owns the movie. Same thing with Sasha Cali's Supergirl. She only elevated the movie a bit further, and for good reason. But because of these two, I started to enjoy this movie around the middle section. The middle section of this movie was fun, and even Ezra Miller got a few moments to shine here and there. Honestly, it was when we got to General Zod that I realized, oh shit, this rodeo's gonna kick off, and it was just a mindless, numbing CGI fest for 20 minutes. And in regards to how the film wraps up the characters of Batman and Supergirl, it really felt like nothing was accomplished. At all. The way they wrapped up these two characters, it felt very shitty to me, and made me wish they had been in a movie more deserving of them. Overall, guys, I was not a fan of The Flash. I hate the fact that I came back to reviewing, and it feels like every video outside of the Spider-Verse one has been pretty negative. But I can't lie about my opinion. While the action in the middle part was great, and Keaton and Callie were on point, the script was a total mess, and the core of the story failed to resonate with me. Still, I'll say this. I'm giving the movie a C-. minus. Again, as I said in the beginning, it does the job it was purposed to do, even if it didn't do it well. And I did like this slightly more than Transformers Rise of the Beasts, so giving it the same rating as that wouldn't feel right. So if you've seen The Flash, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more.